and tell of his grace and mercy in your life. Appreciate God for his grace and mercy in your life. If the Lord has not been on our side, men will have overcome us. If the Lord has not been with you and I, Satan will be rejoicing over you. Open your mouth and thank God for his mercy. Thank him. Thank him. Appreciate every day for his guidance, his preservation, his sustenance. In and all around you, he has been your God, your Lord, your shield, your partner. Appreciate him. If not the Lord who is on our side, Satan will not prevail. Riches will not prevail. Circumstances will not prevail. But you are standing strong because the Lord is on your side. Exalt him this morning, magnify him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. Brethren, the Lord is in our midst this morning. The Lord is in our midst this morning. What are the things that you are bothered about? They are too small for God to handle. What are the accusations of the enemy against your life? The Lord has, yes, he had them. What are the cares of your life? The Lord knows it all. But in the midst of it, he wants to hear you say, thank you, Jesus. Can you lift up your voice and just thank him? Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Appreciate him. Tell him, Father, I acknowledge you. I give you praise. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you all adoration. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I magnify your name. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we give thanks. See our fire you brought me. with a grateful heart we sing your praise this morning we acknowledge you for fighting all our battles for us we adore you for standing by us we magnify you because you are the one who is prevailing on our behalf you are the one who is shutting down the mouth of enemies shutting down the mouth of witches and wizards shutting down their wickedness in high places shutting down their evils and giving us the power to prevail at every point in time you are the reason why our joy is consistent, not minding what we go through or what we are faced with. That is why we are here this morning, Lord, to just exalt your name and to magnify you. We say be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, as you look into your word, that you will open up your word to us. Your word of life, your word of strength, your word of faith, your word of healing, your word of restoration, your word of miracles, and your word of answered prayers will reach each and every one of us this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, righteous Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. A living and a better amen. Your amen can be better than that. Your amen can be louder than that. Somebody lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. Lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. Lift up your voice and shout hallelujah. 
I'd like you to walk up to three persons, give them an high five and say, God is good, man. Amen. God is good, man. You can see it in my life. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Glory to God. So people are doing high five like village people. Eh? Very, very crude. Amen. You are giving high five as if uh, your hand is a village and uh, fam. Come on. Can you do it swagaliciously? Come on, give the fellow a high five and say, God is good. Amen. We are blessed in Jesus' name. I thank God for our lives. I thank God for his goodness in all that concerns us. Please help me celebrate God's presence in the life of the choir this morning. God bless you. 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 More of God's grace on you all in Jesus' name. You will never be dry. As God used you to draw his presence into our midst, your life, every detail of your life will not lack God's presence in Jesus' name. Amen. We're looking at scriptures this morning to encourage us in our relationship life. And we're trusting God to speak to us on living and growing together in love. Song of Solomon chapter 3, verse number 4, says, I have found the one whom my soul loves. That means love that comes from the soul is what is true and genuine. Any love that is resident only in the realm of the flesh of the natural is not genuine. It cannot sustain life, neither can it sustain marriage. Proverbs 31 verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. The quality of who you are as a person, as a daughter of Zion, as a son of God, will affect the depth and the cost of what it entails to find you. And when you find yourself as somebody of great value, the value God has put upon you affects how valuable your marriage be like. So we we'll bring value into marriage. So the man brings the value God has placed on him into marriage. The wife brings the value God has made her into marriage. So you find in marriage a man of honor and greatness and dominion marrying a woman whose, whose price is far more than rubies. So it is not in marriage you begin to grow value. You bring value into marriage. Mark chapter 10, verse number 9. Therefore what God has joined together, let no man, put, let no man, let no man separate. So you want to ask, who, what does God join together? What can God join together? If it is not his will, the joining is not his counsel. So, but when it is his will, the joining is his counsel. Then God is involved. And in such joining, God is also joined with them in that marriage. So, it is not only the man and the woman that are joined together. God, they are joined to God in holy matrimony. So, when we say holy matrimony, it means a man and a woman yet to be married, joined to God for a partnership that only takes God to wrong. So marriage in the sight of God is a man and a woman coming together with him to run the race of life with God leading them and both of them holding themselves together behind God and then moving in God's direction. Proverbs 17, verse number 17, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. This is a major need that makes marriage to work because one, you can't determine how long your marriage will be. So you need a friend that loves at all times. You can determine the level of challenges you will face. So you need a brother who, who is born for you to be able to face the adversity you are going to be facing together in life. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21. Submit to one another out of reference for Christ. So in marriage, there is joint submission. The woman is called to primarily submit but by the power of love, the man is able to submit also to his partner in marriage. I'd like you to know that looking at this scripture verse, it should tell you that marriage is not man's idea. It's God's idea. The word of God lays a template for what God designed to be called marriage. So if your marriage is run by your own initiative and ideas and sense, and not along the counsel of God, written and guided by his word, then you are out of God's mandate in all ramification. God saw himself that he was needed to be able to put in touch in ground for something that will make man to have a wonderful life. For example, 
God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit enjoy unusual companionship, unusual love together. So he looked at man. I need to make a male and a female so that they can have this kind of, of relationship we have. But they as humans who have our kind of spirit and image so that what we have as Godhead, they can have in their humanity. In their humanity, even though they are man, but because they have me in them, they can be able to have the kind of unity we enjoy among themselves. That is why I have always advised those who are singles, you are trusting God for who to marry, marry a growing Christian. Not just a Christian, a growing Christian. The fellow may call himself a Christian, but you have to test him and test her to be sure that the fellow is a growing Christian. Because marriage is about growth and development. Marriage lasts beyond today. So you don't need somebody who is a person in your life for today. But you need somebody who you will be inside each other's life for eternity. My desire is that every couple will live to see their children's children's children. That talks of three generations. So you don't need a person of today to be able to go into decades. You need somebody with the image and likeness of God. God, with his image and likeness, is able to be called the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God wants to see that kind of replay in Mary, where a couple will be the same yesterday, today, and forever. Not a family whereby you started with love yesterday, and then as soon as you got married, you became, the house became a war zone. No, 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 no. But I strongly believe, as I said before again and again, every marriage can work. Say that to your neighbor. Every marriage can work. Amen. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Say, God will bless us in the name of Jesus. God will bless you and I in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's look at more briefly, within the time I have, what are the biblical reasons for marriage that can help us to live together in love, and in perversion. Number one, to solve the problem of loneliness. God says it's not good for the man to be alone. So God brings us into marriage that the issue of loneliness will be solved. Genesis 2, 18. And the Lord God said it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. That tells you if it is not good for the man to be alone, that means the man who is, who is not meant to be alone has a level of weakness. The Bible referring to the woman in scripture says to the man, dwell with her as a weaker vessel. So if the woman is referred to as a weaker vessel, then the man is a weak vessel. So in marriage, a weak man marries a weaker woman, and that means both of them lack strength in some area. That is why you find that in marriage, opposite is what attracts. There are limitations in the man, there are limitations in the woman, and there are maturity in the man, there are maturity in the woman. So you have both sides. That is why you need God at the center, who is the source of all strength to strengthen the weakness of the man and the weakness of the woman so that the maturity of the man plus the, weak, plus the strength of God, the maturity of the woman plus the strength of God makes a marriage to be balanced. I pray for you this morning that God will bring you into this in the name of Jesus. Can your amen be better than that? Can your amen be better than that? Can your amen be better than that? Number two, to avoid fornication. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 1 and 2. Now, concerning the things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. I am a pastor. There is anointing. Amen. But there are things that anointing cannot solve. Amen. Are you listening to me? There are things I don't think I not solve. It takes my wife to solve it for me. There are things in our life that I don't think I not solve. It takes her husband to solve it for her. So there are solutions of life that God has put in both the man and the woman that it takes them in your life to be able to have it. Pray from now till eternity. It can come. It can come. The Bible says if a man, if a, if a, when you find a wife, you find a good thing. Number two, you obtain favor. So there are good things some man can never have until they marry their wife. And there are favors they can never enjoy until they marry their own wife. The Bible says the man is the head. There is a level of promotion no woman can reach except you have a man on your head. Never. You can never have it. 
So if there is a Godhead of promotion, when the Bible is saying, shall be the head and not the tail, one of the things of entering to that kind of headship is to marry. Have your own husband. Then promotion will be sure. Promotion will be sure. When we got married, I was also a CRM, a CRM coordinator. But as God promoted me, he was promoting my wife. When the mission was promoting, it is me they were promoting. But my wife promoted her. So my promotion is a promotion. I mean, I shock you. The mission will also check, is he a man who has a wife, who has a wife who is godly, who has a wife who is friendly, who has a wife who is wonderful. So the good thing in our own life, he did my promotion. Are you listening to me? Husbands, listen. There are qualifications in your wife's life that if you don't allow it to come out, you can't go beyond the level you are. Wife, listen. If you don't submit to your own husband as well, there are things God wants to do in you. Your own goodness and favor can show. Can show. So God allowed that. Let me turn this way. To allow for check and balance so that we can be balanced in the way we manage our home and our life. To have children, that is true. Genesis 1, 26 to 28 talks about um, increasing and populating and having the rest. So when children enter into the world outside the medium of marriage, they are handicapped and often turn out to be delinquent. But note that it's possible to be married and not have a biological children. It does not cancel the authenticity of your marriage. It doesn't. It doesn't. So the God type of marriage is one man, one woman. Genesis 2, 22. And in marriage is where you achieve living and cleaving. So there are a bit four to five fold pattern that God expects that every marriage must have. Number one, one man, one woman. Not one man and another man. Not one woman and another woman. That is demonic, devilish. What God plans in scripture is one man, one woman. A single man to a single woman. Not one man, two women. No, one man, one wife. Amen. Number two, living and cleaving. Genesis 2, 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his own wife. And there shall be one flesh. Amen. And there are four ways of cleaving together. Number one, physical. Physical. I do not support getting married and living apart. You know that. I do not support traveling out of the country and leaving your spouse behind. Never. All those who are married, who are here, who have traveled, who have come to tell me, sir, rejoice with me. God has done it. I have a visa. I say, praise God. Is your partner going with you? It's the next question I will ask. If you say no, I will tell you, you have not done well. Because even the couple who are staying together face temptation. How much more the one who now leaves Nigeria, goes to Canada, go to US, leave his wife in another country, and you are separated for several years. How do you undo the issue of temptation? How do you balance up the issue of trust? So the scripture says, let nothing put asunder. Number one, don't let location put asunder. Number two, don't let economic and financial issues put asunder. Number three, don't let influence of friends put asunder and families and parents put asunder. And don't let opposite sex put asunder. Those four things must not be allowed in your marriage. Must not be allowed in your marriage. And then the issue of companionship and then openness. Your spouse must know all about you in order to avoid surprises, unpleasant surprises. Even if you have had a child out of wedlock, let your spouse know. If, she can, if he or she cannot handle your errors or your mistakes of the past, he can't handle you of the, in the future. He can't handle you. So you don't need to hide. Besides, whatever you think you're hiding in is not, it's not a secret. Somebody somewhere knows. And one day the thing will come out. One day the thing will come out. So let there be no hiding. You hide your age. Because you must marry that brother. He went to Okwan. Change your birth certificate. A lady did that. Just after they got married, the young man got to know that the lady lied. Lied about her age. Lied about her certificate. Lied about her health status. She never had OND. She said she had a degree. She was older than the young man. She said she was younger. And of course, you know, you can get any certificate today from Ladipo. 
She was HIV positive. She didn't tell the young man. <laughs> Maybe I will tell you some stories. Amen. I was the one involved in their premarital counseling. So, at some point, the Lord told me to teach on some basic truths. So, I taught on it. When they came another time, I was to go to another topic. The Holy Spirit said, go back to the former topic. I obeyed. The third time, I was to teach on another. The Holy Spirit said, go back to what you taught. So, I found myself in about four different sessions, repeating the same topic. Hello. Thank God you know your pastor. I will obey the Holy Spirit. I will obey. And then the Holy Spirit began to break some things open. By the time she would open up to the young man, they had gone to marry, pay the bride price. They shifted their church service about a month to the engagement and I told them no that until you do your church wedding that is when your wedding is legal if you are not doing church wedding your traditional and registry legalizes it but if church wedding is involved then until you are joined together in only matrimony that is when your wedding is legalized and that's when you can move into each other's house as he returned from the engagement she moved into his house and told the young man never to tell me <laughs> but nothing is hidden. Hello. The secret came out. And the secret came out about a week to their church wedding. So I canceled the church wedding. And I told the, the person in charge of the certificate to tear the certificate. Because on wedding day, we joined two people together, not three. Not three. And then somehow after the wedding, all that secret came out. The young guy came to my house and was crying. Daddy, she lied about her certificate. She never had any certificate. She said she's a degree older. She lied about her age. You know, she's almost like eight years or ten years older than me. She lied that I'm older than her. Uh, Daddy, do you also know that she is HIV positive? Despite the truth being out, the lady, rather than being sober, began to fight this guy for opening up to me. It's a painful story. I don't love to share it. Why? Because the lady died for hiding himself. God justified the young man and dealt with her. Six months after the wedding, she died. And when the young man went by to go and do another HIV test, it was negative. Don't because I must marry, I must marry, I must marry, I must marry. Kill yourself before your time. But when you allow yourself to follow God's guidelines, the obedience of the scripture, I've told you, when you obey God's word, you are super abundantly blessed. Obedience is your key, all round key in walking in all round abundance. Obedience. It works more than prayer point. It works more than prayer point. But on what basis what God did God validate Abraham obedience? On what basis did God validate Job obedience? On what basis did God talk from heaven about Jesus Christ, his son, obedience? Obedience. Obedience. I pray this morning that the willingness for each one of us to truly and completely always submit to God in all things, the Lord give to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say it better, amen. amen. Say it better, amen. amen. So when you are open, that is when you achieve Genesis 2, verse 21, that says, naked but not ashamed. If you are not open, you cannot be trusted. Openness is the key to trust in marriage. Openness is the key to trust in marriage. Between me and my wife, nothing is hidden. When we were cutting, everything was unveiled. Everything was unveiled. I was in a former relationship for five years. She knew. When she broke, she knew. I knew about her own former relationship. Everything was open. So, there once there is nothing to hide, your heart is light. 
But once you are hiding something, hiding that, every day you leave it in fear. And there are four ways to be naked. Historically, past relationship, financially, debt, income, asset, obligations, physically, naked at home, and sexual, sexual liability, sexual liberty, let your wife, your spouse know your sexual orientation, spiritually, aspirations in future, personal sins, if they are there, then sex and reproduction. These are four dimensions you need to understand. Now, singles, can I speak to you? You have often asked, one of the fundamental questions singles have asked is, that, can I ask, can I ask God for a specific person to marry? Can I ask God for a specific person to ever marry? The Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 4, Psalm 37 verse number 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. God honors our desires. But the key to God honoring your desires is that you delight yourself in the Lord. When you delight yourself in the Lord, your desires are always according to the Lord's plan for your life. Hello? So when you are saying, the scripture says the Lord will grant the desires of the righteous, stop removing the word righteous out of that point. So who is the righteous? A fellow that delights himself in the Lord. That means he aligns his desires along the will of God. Your desires must align with the will of God. When your desires align with the will of God, God will grant it. Can I still have God's will in marriage after disobedience in rejecting God's will before? Of course, yes. If you truly repent. So take note of this following five truths. I wish I had time to be able to say more. What are some of the lies that God tells some of our singles which they hold on to? Number one, there is no need to fast and pray. It is not working anyway. I fasted before and this fellow came and said, Thus says the Lord. And I agreed. Did you check? Don't let anybody just come and bamboozle you. The fellow came. Carry Bible that is as big as Dick's uh, dictionary. Thus says the Lord. You are my wife. How do you know? I saw myself climbing tree of mango. And the tree was high. So I was plugging the mango, plugging the mango, falling to the ground and breaking. Suddenly, a lady appeared with a basket in her hand. And she began to catch it like a football uh, goalkeeper. I was putting them in the mango. So none of the mango got broken. And then I heard the Lord say, for the mangoes not to have broken, your life cannot break in her hand. Seek God. Validate. Even if any pastor tells you, but Alakbaja is good for you, marry him. Don't accept. I don't match make. Never. Because I won't live in the marriage with you. If God does not speak to you, don't accept what I tell you. Whatever I tell you must be secondary confirmation. What God tells you must be primary confirmation. Because you have to, because in marriage you will be faced daily with the fact that you made a choice. And your personal choice lies on your conviction. The enabling grace to forbear, to stand, to forgive lies on the fact that the Lord spoke to me. When God made Eve, when God made Eve, I need a couple, please. Bro, I do want you to come. Your wife is closer. Please come, come, come. Run, run, run. Come to the altar. Come. You come to that side. Be looking at each other as you are coming. <laughs> come here. <laughs> stay here. You didn't wait for me to tell you where to stay. When God said it's not good for him to be alone, the next thing was that God put him to sleep. Remember? In essence, a, play, a state of him to take his eyes away from things environment and concentrate on the God who said it's not good for him to be alone. And then God went, took a rib, and came and made the bone of his, of his bone and the flesh of his flesh. Now, read your Bible. The Bible says he brought her to him. God didn't talk. 
but he did the creating and the bringing. So as he behold God standing in their middle, he saw. And then he now opened his mouth and said what? This is the bone of the bone. Come on, say it now. Was that how you proposed to her when you went to go and propose to her? About flower, Danny, then you flower. Collect now. Eh. When he came, was the flower as beautiful as this? I've been a Bible you carry. <laughs> or he did like me. It was on the road I proposed to my wife. It was very urgent, so I didn't delay. <laughs> so what did man say? What did Adam say when God brought her to him? He said, This is the bone of my bone and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. And in, before that time, God brought animals to him. And the scripture says, the, whatever he called them, that is what they became. So God allowed him again to call her what he will be seeing her to be for the rest of his life. And you can never have a picture, a perfect picture of your spouse, except in God. That's why some people, after marriage, will see the woman and say, you are a devil. And they will call the fellow a devil. And no wonder, what manifestation do they see in the home? Devilish manifestation. You will look at the man and say the man is another negative name. And what will she be seeing? He says, because whatever you call each other is what you will experience from each other. Drop my flower and go back to your seat. Please go back to your seat. Amen. <laughs> Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. So if the devil tells you you can't find a partner in God, he's lying to you. Never believe it. Like number two, that you are going to die an old maid or an old lady or an old bachelor because you're of age. The Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 25, I have been young and now I'm old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken. You may be above 40, God will choose your partner for you. A lady gave a testimony, I think this last Holy Ghost service or the one before, she's over 50. And God chose for her, I have seen that, I have daughters who are married, and who married when they were over 40, over 45. I can point to those who married even above 50, yet they found the bone of their bone and the flesh of their flesh. The woman, Pastor W.F. Kumu, he married after his first wife died. She, she was a virgin at that age of 60 plus. So there is no daughter of Zion that is forsaken. None. None. None at all. None at all. I pray for each one of us this morning that the Lord God Almighty will guide you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your amen can be better than that. Amen. Your amen can be better than that. Amen. Your amen can be better than that. Amen. Now if you are cutting, mind these two truths, there are many more, I'll share them some other time. That's number one, even in your courtship, the leading of the Holy Ghost must continue. Many rely on God when it's time to choose. After choosing, they rely on themselves. They shift away. They stop trusting in God. They begin to do everything in carnality. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. And you must realize that as you begin to cut, some things must be in place. What do you discuss? What do you plan? Courtship is not a time to only visit Mr. Biggs, Sister Biggs. No, those are not fundamental things that are needed in courtship. Courtship period is to communicate and get to understand who you are, who she is. Create time to pray. Create time to study God's word together. Create time to plan. Create time to know him or her. What kind of a person is he? What are his strengths? What are his visions? What are her visions? What is she? What does she? What does she want to aspire to in life? If you are cutting, and when you ask your partner, what are your, your 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 what is your purpose in life? And he says, your purpose is my purpose. What are your vision? Your vision is my vision. What are your dream? Your dream is my dream. So that means your sleep is my sleep. And if fellow has nothing to say, <laughs> fire on the mountain. Or you are getting married to a young man who tells you that all about marriage to him is who he is. 
that you have to kill your, your profession, kill your desires, kill this, kill your certificate, kill everything, then you know that man is going to kill you. Because in marriage, you are lying. You do what? You are lying. You are lying. You are lying. I pray this morning that the Lord will guide every one of us in the name of Jesus. Can I amen be better than that? 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 The Lord will stand by each one of us in the name of Jesus and bring enlargement beyond expectations in all areas of our life in the name of Jesus. Your amen can be better than that. So as a single, let me lead you in two, three prayer points you must always concentrate upon. You must trust God, put in your regular prayers, the power and the grace to overcome sexual immorality because you'll be tempted. I think yesterday as I was looking over this message again and again, I was reflecting on the number of times I would have fornicated and the amount of the number of ladies I would have impregnated out of wedlock when I was growing up. I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> I'm not ugly now. Am I ugly? Am I not attractive? And all these ladies, I never even said, excuse me, how are you? They just came naturally. Every sin that is trying to come naturally around you, fire of God burn them in Jesus' name. <laughs> and I remember that it's either I ran, the Bible says flee. Is that not so? My friend set me up on one. No, my friend set me up on one. My elder sister set me up on one, another one. Friend set me up again. Another friend. When I was in primary school, friend set me up. When I was in secondary school, friend set me up. After secondary school, my elder sister set me up. When I was in the polytechnic, colleagues set me up. But for every setup, God provided a way of escape. Why? Fornication was not in my intention. If it is in your intention, the strength to even stand up and run out of the way God creates will not come. Will not come. Will not come. I pray this morning that the Lord will help you in the name of Jesus. Number two, pray that you always find joy every day. Psalm 118, verse number 24. Pray that the Lord will help you to trust in God each and every time. Now for the married, what prayer should we pray? Psalm 51, verse 10, that God create in us a pure heart towards each other. A pure heart towards my spouse. A pure heart to seek you first in everything that concerns my spouse. That's for Psalm 37, verse 3. And then Psalm 1. Verse 1 to 3, Lord, help us that we shall walk together, in, not in the steps of wickedness, that in our journey in marriage, we will not allow mockers, we will not allow those who, whose words will destroy our marriage. There are three sets of people, the book of Psalm 1 says you must avoid. Do not sit with scoffers, do not stand with this, do not allow this. And when you end up, allow any of these people, they ruin your marriage in life. I have a standing policy. I am either in church doing God's assignment or I am at home. I have colleagues. But I don't discuss with them beyond the assignments. No. No. I have a father in the Lord whom I discussed my marital issue because I have tested and approved the fellow that he will tell me the truth always. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. And you also need to pray. That God will make you strong together. Joshua 1 verse 9. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. You need to be strong together. There are times the man will be weak. The strength of the wife will carry him. There are times the woman will be weak. The strength of the husband will carry him. But when you are both weak, then we will carry you. There have been days that I was strong and I needed to minister. It was the strength of God through my wife that carried me to this altar to preach. 
And as soon as I stepped down and I got back home, she knew she must immediately attend to me. But many of you don't know. But because I know that I have a wife who is strong, when I am moved, she is strong, I know that her strength is available for me. There was one time I was close with this. I had administration somewhere in, in Agbo, and I needed to be there. And I had this pain in my stomach. I was waiting to go for surgery. I had a near of the stomach. My, the stomach wall on the inside was open. So for once in a while, my intestine will run into that open wall. And then I will have excruciating. At times, I walk bended. I needed to go to administration in Agbo, the province headquarters there. So she was praying for me. A young man was with me, a son in the Lord, who knew what I was going through. So from home to the place, it was in pain. We got down, he said, Daddy, will you be able to minister? God will help me. So when it was time to minister, as I mounted the pulpit, he was supposed to undo the system to project for me. He came to stand here, like this. They thought he was protocoling me. They didn't know. The guy knew what he was doing. I know the state of the health of my pastor. My wife was praying at home. He was standing with me. And she was in contact with him. Iman Afa, how is daddy doing? He said, it's fine. He has started ministry now. How is he doing? God is helping him. And as I took the microphone, strength came. I didn't feel any pain again. Stood for over five hours. And as I dropped the microphone, hey, yeah. The pain came back. I managed to stand up to live where people were. As I got to where there was nobody was, he heard me immediately. I will run back to the hotel. Amen. If you don't marry your own partner, when your season of pain comes, that fellow may be praying that you should die. There are wives praying for their husband to die. There are husbands praying for their wife to die. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Please rise on your feet this morning. Rise on your feet this morning and lift up your hands to God and talk to God. Lord God Almighty, help me. Help me that I will walk in your understanding, in your counsel for my marriage to stand. I will walk in your purpose for my marriage to stand. I will walk in your truth, Lord God Almighty, for my marriage to stand. Lord, in any way I'm going through any challenges, help me to imbibe the truth that will make my marriage work. Help me to imbibe the truth that will make my marriage work. Singles, I'd like you to pray. Are you working in any wrong relationship? Ask the Lord to bring you out of it. Are you trusting God for who to marry? Can you say, Lord God Almighty, I delight in you. I put my delight in you. I put my delight in you. Are you already in a relationship and things are not going as expected? Can you subject it to God's, God's, God's mirror of his word and scrutiny? Did God lead you into it? Is it a relationship of unusual pain and battling? And God has been telling you to step out of it, but you have been disobedient. Can you ask God to have mercy upon you this moment that you will do the truth, you will walk in the truth? Talk to God, talk to God, talk to God. Lord, help me. Help me to align my life, align my thoughts, align my desires with you in every way. Couples, pray for yourself. Lord, help us, make us strong together. Let our thoughts align. Let our strength align. Help me to be strong for my spouse. Help me to support my spouse. Wives, pray for your husband. Lord God Almighty, help me never to open my mouth to curse my husband. Husbands, pray for your wife. Lord, help me to be able to forbear with my wife that nothing she does will get me furiated to the point of cursing or abusing her. Both of you, pray for yourself. Lord, make us the best of the best model for our children, for our grandchildren. That will be a model for them to copy from Make us a, a guide and a light. Lord, help us that through us, your covenant upon our children will not be abated. We well, will not be the one that will make them to lose out in the beauty and glory of life, in the blessings of the Almighty God. Are you going through issues in your home? Can you talk to God? Lord, open myself to myself. Everything I have been doing wrong, that is making this marriage not to be healthy. Lord, open my eyes. I am ready to follow your truths. Are you trusting God to marry or to to, to, or to to remarry after maybe the death of your spouse? Can you ask God to guide you not according to your flesh, but according to his spirit in the name of Jesus? As for the designing of the Holy Ghost in being able to know who to marry. Jeremo, Sontobo, Jeremo, Jeremo, Jeremo. Mighty God, I say thank you. Blessed and blessed be your holy name. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. You are mature. You are trusting God for who to marry. You are here. You are in a turbulent relationship and you are scared of coming out of it. You are here. Number three, you have been jilted again and again and your heart is full of hurt and pain. If you belong to any of these three groups, I'd like you to please come forward now. I call them together because so that I can preserve you who you are. You are mature, trusting God for who to marry and your of age. Come. You are here. You have been jilted again and again and again. It's as if you can never find a life a partner. That every relationship you ever find ends in pain. Come now. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You are in the presence of God. Come. You are here. You are engaged. But you know you are engaged to trouble. It has been pain upon pain upon pain. Manipulation upon manipulation. Hurt upon hurt. You are crying daily. You are crying daily. You are just crying daily. You are just crying daily. That this is the kind of life I'm going to walk into. Come now. Come now. Come now. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. You are here. You are trusting God for his intervention. Maybe in your own marriage or in the marriage of your children because they are married. But it is war day and night. Come. Let's pray. See how far you helped me. Yes, hey, Bube. I'm so glad you found me worthy. I can see. I can see. I can tell. Yes, I know. He you to stretch your hands forward. Heavenly Father, I stretch my hands over this, your sons and daughters. And Lord, I decree concerning the issues that pertains to them, that pertains to their children, that pertains to their own personal life, or the family that they are standing in for, or their own personal life. Lord God Almighty, they are in your presence. They are before your altar. Lord, I decree this very moment. Take away every pain in the name of Jesus. Heal every heart in the name of Jesus Christ. Heal every heart in the name of Jesus. Lord, every source of the pain, Lord God Almighty, you will intervene in an unusual way this very moment in the name of Jesus. Lord, those who are crying, can I still be married? I have made several mistakes. Can anybody accept me with my baggages? Lord, you are the burden bearer. You are the one that brings newness. You are the one that can give a new wine and also change the skin to a new one. Lord, I ask that you renew each one of those involved in the name of Jesus. Lord, anyone disappointed again and again, every yoke of continued disappointment concerning who to marry, I command it broken in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask of you that you will cast your love upon them afresh and make them unusually new to be behold as a beauty over all other beauties in the name of Jesus. Lord, families who are going through issues, I decree this very moment. Lord, every marriage can work. You are the head of every home. Lord, I ask that you, your place be restored in all such homes in the name of Jesus. Any man, any woman married, but who is the source of problem in the marriage, Lord, I decree that in an unusual way, let them encounter you in the name of Jesus. And let your name alone be glorified. Lord, that song is able to see how far you have helped me. Let it, become, let it come to be the song of testimony of all these, your sons and daughters, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, righteous Father. Blessed be your holy name. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we'll pray. Please go back to your seats. See how far you have Let our children be good. seated for a moment. We want to uh, anoint our children, but before we do that, we have some of our children who are